How's it going everybody? Thank you for watching another video. Today we're going to continue on with my diagnosis of my lean engine code. Now if you didn't have a chance to check out my last video, I'll leave a link for it right up here. In that video we used an old school vacuum gauge to point us in the right direction and most likely there isn't a vacuum leak. When we measured my vacuum in my engine it was hanging in there right around 17 to 19 inches of mercury. But today we're going to try to validate those results with an OBD2 scanner. And of course guys, if at the ending of the video you want to purchase any of the products mentioned in this video, make sure you check out the links in the description below. Before getting started, just a quick word on OBD2 scanners. Now they're going to come in all different price ranges, and of course the more you pay, the more information you're going to get. But if you want something on the budget side, I recommend this guy right here. Now I'm going to have links in the description below, but this guy's going to give you basically everything you need. You can look up your codes clear them, find out what it is, and it can give you live data. Now the problem with this guy is it doesn't graph your results. And if you're a rookie like me, you're going to need something like this because I'm not too good at interpreting numbers, but when I see it on a graph, it's a little bit more helpful. Now for this video, the data points we're going to be looking at is the long-term fuel trim and how increasing the RPMs affects that long-term fuel trim. Now, if you're not familiar with fuel trims, that's not a huge deal. There's basically two types. There's short and long-term fuel trim. Now the short term fuel trim is trying to keep that fuel mixture at 0 0.450. That's the perfect ratio of fuel that it wants to add into your engine. So you're going to see it kind of going up and down, maybe plus five, maybe negative three. So long as it doesn't go over a certain number, like let's say 20%, I think is when most codes are going to be thrown. So if it throws it at plus 20, you get a lean code. If it goes negative 20, most likely a rich code. So I guess if it stays like plus 10, negative 10 in that band, you should be okay. Now the long-term fuel trim is a learned response of the averages between those highs and lows. And that's why we want to focus in on that. All right, here is what my OBD2 scanner read for my long-term fuel trim. It's at 30%. Remember, we're supposed to be kind of plus minus 10% band, right? It's way above that. And this kind of makes me think that if there was a vacuum leak somewhere in that engine bay, like on the, on the hoses, or a leak that I should be able to hear or see something. And just from visually looking around, I couldn't see anything. So I'm leaning more toward fuel delivery, but 30% is pretty high. Now here's a look at the graphs I was talking about. We're gonna see this, this is what it read at, but if there was a vacuum leak, it would look something like this. Now, so here is the long-term fuel trim. It's flat right here. This is all on a warm engine. And the reason we want it warm is we want to make sure that the car is in a closed loop system. When you first turn on your car, it's an open loop system where your computer is controlling everything. So that's why we want to warm it up. So this is where the vacuum, if there is a vacuum leak, is going to be at its strongest because everything is still kind of closed up, right? Your throttle is closed. And if there's a vacuum leak, it's sucking at its hardest. And that's why it's going to maintain this 30%. But as we open up the throttle and we increase the RPMs, now there's more air rushing into the intake manifold and it's going to drop the vacuum as you increase the RPMs. So this is what a vacuum leak chart or graph might look like. But what we're going to see is this. As the RPMs increase, so does the need for fuel. And as a result, the long-term fuel trim is going to go up as well. Let's have a look. All right, here we go. We are going to be picking the long-term fuel trim and engine RPM. And as we can see right there, long-term fuel trim right over here is 36.7, like I said, plus 30. Now, the red line here, that's the long-term fuel trim. Just flat right now. RPMs again, just kind of bobbing up and down. It's normal, okay? Just to show you that it's red flat line. But here we go. I'm going to increase it to about 1,500 RPMs. And see it jump up there. I'm going to hold it there for a while. Not acting like a vacuum leak. And let's have it go down. Okay, what happens if we go to 2,000 RPMs, right? Again, it's going higher. Long-term fuel trim at 39%. It's probably maxed out there. A little bit more, get it to 2,000. 
see they're just flattening out following the RPMs and back down so again this leads me to believe with this pattern that it's not a vacuum leak because as you open up the throttle the long-term fuel trim should go down not up like this it shouldn't follow the RPMs look at that here is the scorecard so far on the vacuum leak side not much evidence but on the fuel delivery side quite a bit here so the vacuum gauge when we tested it had a strong 17 to 19 inches of mercury holding strong so kind of implied that there's no vacuum leak there did not leak down at all then when we had a look at the graphs on the obd2 scanser the long-term fuel trim went up when we increased the rpms not down so that's again kind of reinforces the vacuum gauge test and no visual or audio proof of a 30 percent leakage anywhere on any hoses or around any of the gaskets that i've seen so i think i'm going to start my troubleshooting on the fuel side mm -hmm.